Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier, the DRF Bets Race of the Day for Thursday, June the 14th, race number six at the Great Race Place Santa Anita. We're going down the hill at about six and a half furlongs, and let's take a look at this field of fillies and mares. You can access free formulator pass performances on the Race of the Day event page at drf.com. Please download them and handicap along with us. We'll take this field in post position order. And Matt, Go On Mary is still a turf maiden, but I'm a little bit interested in her. I think she's run some good sneaky races on the turf. I mean, I, I have to be honest with you. If she runs the race that she ran in the Sweet Life in early 2017, she has every right to win this race. Uh, I understand her recent form looks a little bit suspect, but I kind of agree with you. I think that's predominantly because I know she's won on the dirt in the past, but I wonder if she's actually a little bit more better off, better suited for running on the turf. Now we have to deal with a six-month layoff, and that is concerning. But you mentioned that sweet life going down the hill. She was third against a quality runner in Miss Sunset. The China doll, she was just in way too tough against the likes of Bo Recall and Sir Cat Sally and Madam Dance a lot. A key race to be sure. And her most recent turf race on April the 2nd, I just watched it. She broke great, and Tyler Bates took her all the way back to last and widest turning into the stretch. She had no chance after that. I think she might have found the right field. I like the fact that Pratt continues to ride. She's going to have to deal with the layoff. That's the one. Go on, Mary. The two is Lori's Attitude, who's stepping up out of the claiming ranks for trainer Carla Gaines. She's won her last two races going down the hill with solid buyer speed figures, and she's got a good amount of speed. I respect Lori's Attitude. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, if nothing else, she's razor sharp right now. You know she's in great form, and hopefully she can carry that on. I think a little bit of a class hike, it's going to be interesting to see how she handles that. For what it's worth with Carla Gaines, past five years, winner last out, second off the bench, one for 22 with a 16-cent ROI. But, again, if you're looking for a horse that is in form, that you can trust to at least be in good shape at this point anyway, as opposed to some of these other horses, perhaps Lori's attitude is an interesting one. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector. You would think that Lori's attitude would be close to the pace. That's where she's done her best running. Not so, according to the pace projector. They have Go On Mary, a gate-to-wire winner on dirt two starts back out there on the lead. Lori's attitude might opt for the pocket, but I'm not sure that's her best running style. No, I agree with you. I mean, you go through and look, she's won three times, and I know that she's won from just pressing the pace, basically, just slightly off of it, but she is always forwardly placed. I think this is an instance where it depends, really. If the one horse doesn't break alertly or they're not intent on going forward, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see Bejarano go on with it. Go see Cal won two starts back off a slight layoff going down the hill. It was a race she got a little bit of pace, and she rallied from off of it, and then most recently went hiked up to this level. I have to admit I was a little bit disappointed. She turns into the stretch with a chance, hop back to her left lead late, but it was a solid, even performance from a buyer speed figure standpoint. The runner-up came back to finish second in a 1X, but she was 4-5. to five. Yeah, and she, she was 4-5, to five, so a little bit disappointing there with Travieza, but she did earn a 79 buyer, so at least you know that Go See Cal's been in good form and keeping good company recently. Really, it boils down to, if you're looking at it from a figure standpoint, I think she's the horse to beat. The 79 buyer is the highest last out in the field. She's earned good time form U.S. ratings. My only concern with her, and I understand this is one that you've got to kind of make a decision. Seven times second or third, only two for 20 overall. But the vast majority of her career on turf has been going long. Right. So perhaps this is what she's wanted all along. I think she's a prime player. She's going to also need some pace. Time Form U.S. has her last in the early portion of this race. The four tis an illusion is going to be way closer to first than last. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if she's outright on the lead for trainer John Sadler. Last time out, Joe Talamo decided to raid her a little bit down in the pocket inside. And I just don't think tis an illusion was very happy in that position. And two starts back, she was more aggressively handled by Talamo, and she finished a solid second. I thought, all in all, that 84 buyer speed figure was a good performance. Kent DeZormo's on now, and I think Kent's going to be aggressive. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, I think you kind of brought up a good point with the two horse, where perhaps Lori's attitude is more. She's more comfortable out on the front end as opposed to sitting in some sort of a pocket trip. And I think you can make that case for Tis and Illusion in that most recent start. Rather than try to grab and sit just off, I think your best asset is the speed. Use it to your advantage. I think Kent's going to do that. Very similar, though, to a couple of these other girls in this race. It's so, it's so hard for me, even from a speed figure standpoint. I know she fits, but she's been at this level for a long time. Ten times second or third from 16 lifetime starts, only two victories. 
I, I think she she's interesting and she makes a lot of sense from a number standpoint. I, she's just hard to trust. We like horses cutting back in distance on the downhill turf configuration at about six and a half furlongs. The next three horses in post position order are all cutting back in distance, beginning with Robin's Love. Now, this is a filly that was just a runoff last time out, going two turns on the tapita surface at Golden Gate Fields. Big trainer change to Peter Miller, blinkers off. How do you think Tyler's going to handle this one out of the gate? Well, I think it's going to be an instance similar to what we had in that race in October of last year where she went down the hill. And I understand she she faded badly in non-winners of one other than company. But I think there's a scenario where she's going to show a little bit of speed. The blinkers have come off. So I don't think she's going to be out there contesting the pace. I think kind of what the pace projector had indicated, I'd imagine she, she sits two or three lengths off of it, just stalking the pace. If she's good enough, great. If not, based on a recent form, she's probably not good enough. I think if you like this horse, you're really banking on Peter Miller getting the best out of her. And those allowance races were pretty tough up at Golden Gate. The winner of the last one came back to take the Golden Poppy Stakes on turf with an 84 buyer. She is currently riding a three-race win streak. The six is Battleground State, who's coming out of a race where the third-place finisher returned to finish third again, but with an 82 buyer speed figure. And Battleground State's the kind of filly, I think, for Neil Drysdale. I don't think we've seen her best yet, but like Go See Cal, she might need a little bit of pace help up front. And I have to be honest with you, I don't know about you, Dan. I don't know what her best game is. I don't know if she's a downhill kind of horse. I don't know if she's a flat miler. I don't particularly love her when they've tried to stretch her out to that mile on an eighth, but I, I just, I'm torn. I don't know if she is a flat mile or if she appreciates going down the hill. She's gone down the hill two times. She hasn't hit the board either time. Demi Goddess, the seven, is in a better spot in which, than which she was in 13 days ago when she was 96 to one against non-winners of two other then. And she's certainly in a better spot than she was three starts back when she was 79 to one against Fault in the grade three adoration. That being said, she's one for 52 lifetime. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I hate to say it. I don't really have much else to add. I do wonder, ultimately, is she 40 to 1 in this spot? And if she is, I'm not just saying this, is there a scenario where she's run third nine times? Do they just take her back and hope that things heat up and maybe hit the board? Noble Dancer is going to return off a very long layoff of over a year. It's about 18 months since we've seen Noble Dancer. She ran third that day at Golden Gate Fields. The fourth place source came back to earn a 73 buyer speed figure. From a speed figure scale, she's tough to like. And then you add in the layoff maybe she just needs a race it's a wait and see approach yeah that layoff for doug o'neill that's a tough one pat there's greater layoff for 11 and none of them hit the board i suppose the only positive here is this horse the only thus far was sitting on turf overseas let's take a look at our top selections for thursday's drf bets race of the day you're going with peter miller and peter miller you trust you like robin's love she should be a price give me numbers and this spot i'm going five for three and two the part of me that looks at robin's and says mill best out of her is going to get the best of her. i hope she just takes a stalking trip and maybe it works out i don't really love this race i think the ghost sea cal is going to come with a late run vladimir Seren is uh red hot right now at santa anita you can look at her and say she's two for 20. i thought matt made a very valid point though and that most of her races have come going long and i think she is a late running sprinter at heart i'm going to go three two four and one in race number six at santa anita it's thursday's drf bets race of the day and as an approximate post time of three o'clock pacific good luck